All righty. Let's start round two here. So what I'm going to be doing next within this painting is going through and working on these big ball lights up here in this section. All right, so this is what I want to knock out uh, in this next portion. And now I'm not exactly sure how to be able to approach these. I've also got, it looks like some pretty wobbly lines that I didn't have my uh, smoothing turned on when I was creating these. So they're a little bit messy right now. Let's see if we can't paint over some of those. Now, when you approach something like this, that, you know, your reference images, gosh, I hope you guys are picking good reference images, um, aren't exactly helping you navigate navigate through you want to look for things within the reference images that you do have that can give you some clues about it so right here within this uh, this section of my reference image i've got some good transparency that's going on within this tint this is such a, a weird image i don't know if it was ai generated or what but Underneath here, we've got a light that isn't coming from any type of particular source, but we've got, you know, some good sort of transparent material that is glowing. And we've also got some good wrinkles that are happening in here and some good little pools on the material. So let's go in and let's start working from this in with that kind of assumption. So that is a really, really bright highlight. I've already got kind of a middle gray. Um, I do want the wireframe on this to kind of show through. I'm not sure if I want it to be underneath the material. I think that's kind of the way to go. Let's imagine that the uh, those poles are kind of uh, glowing through underneath it, and I need to establish where the light is coming from. So that is about as bright of a white. Yeah, that is all the way up there as we can get. I don't want to go all the way up there because I don't want it to compete with the, uh, the rest of my image. So that one, and a little bit less, there we go. Save those bright whites, right? Um, so let's make it a little bit of a softer glow. I'm going to go in and I'm going to hit V on my keyboard and go to the layer that all that stuff is on. And I'm going to select it. Create a new layer. And I've got my brush set to 100%. Let's go ahead and make some big choices here. So let's imagine that there is a ball that is glowing right around here. And make it a little bit larger. So from there, uh, now that I've got a an intentional light source that's going on, we're kind of creating these big sort of paper lanterns is what I imagine them being, is I can start drawing in those highlights. Let's make sure that on the inside, it's nice and bright. And I want to continue that wireframe or shape that's going on. So I'm doing a little bit more detailed pattern making. Right in this section. Yeah, that's looking good. And we're going to have a bar running through this. I'm working on a new layer and kind of painting around that stuff that I created earlier. Not the not the best technique <laughs> to be able to do digital painting, but we're going to make it work. All right. So now go in, get another one. I've got a glow layer that I'll end up creating over the top of this at the end with the soft brush. But right now I'm working with the, uh, the textured brush through this portion of the painting, All right? There we go, that's all feeling pretty good. Imagine the lighting being a little bit brighter on the inside and the underside of the lamp. And because I left a little bit of room for this to become even brighter, should be in a good space, all right. There we go. Looking pretty good. I like it. And so let's start imagining that that same lip that I'm kind of describing there is on this. And I can make some choices. We're going to make this portion really nice and bright. But let's imagine that that, uh, that material is pulled rather taut. Sort of to the edge and then just flake it out and make it a little bit rougher. So this is just me sort of exploring some shape forms. And again, I'm trying to imagine that the material is pulling across. There's some lines that are working through this stuff. There we go. That's working pretty good for me. We've got our bulb right here, which again is going to be one of the 
brighter sections on this thing. So let's go ahead and imagine that there's some illumination coming from that. And we want that illumination to sort of drop off just a little bit up here at the top. So I could, I'm at 40%, that's a pretty good spot to be able to work with this. And we might even be able to get a couple shadows going on within this glowy globe that I'm creating right now. Probably going to go back and smooth, use the smooth tool for the first time uh, this evening on this section. I want to dissipate right around the edges just a little bit. There we go. Looking pretty good. Getting some good texture going on in there that I think is satisfying the look that I was going for. And those super bright lights. Cool. Let's get some of those lines extending across for the viewer's eye. And then let's pull some of these in. Yeah, there we go. Now we're starting to get in the groove of it. Should have started on this one over here. No deal. It's the very edge of my painting. So, you want to keep any lines in there. If I was you guys and you're watching this on YouTube, I might set it to two times speed at this point. I've just got some a lot of blocking uh, to go in and do. Here we go. So that's working pretty well. I think I'm in a good spot for this. Blocking the way that's working. We've got a lot of texture variation that's going on there. And if I look at my uh, gosh, at my navigator. It's giving me the effect that I was going for. So that's working pretty good. I want to go back to my reference image and let me try and find some little areas to be able to add uh, more shadow into this thing. So I've got this whole ball selected. I'm going to go on the layer on top here. <clears throat> I'm still at 40%. Let's go in and turn that up a little bit. Start making some real choices for how this is going to work. All right. Still want it to be glowy, but we're just going to make it a little bit darker here on right around the edges. Again, always trying to think about the way that the uh, the cloth is getting pulled. So maybe there are just some little micro wrinkles that are starting to exist. Some real light layer there. Doesn't look like I'm doing too much, but hopefully this pays off in the end. All right, so this is where we can actually see. Mesh frame side. Shadow just around the edges. Describe it being a little bit darker here and there. All right, so that's working pretty well for me. I think we're getting that see through look that I was going for. Just adding a few more details to those wrinkles that I was trying to imply, especially the ones that are coming up right around the uh, the wireframe. Let's zoom back and have a look. All right, working pretty well. I'm happy with it. Uh, it doesn't feel quite as illuminated as the bright lights that I was putting on there just a moment ago. So I'm going to create a new layer now. And, uh, you know, I really hate going all the way to super bright white. I'd rather work slower into the super brights that I've got going on within my scene. but sort of what the reference image is doing. So this is part of that learning curve for this stuff. All right. So now I've got my super bright. I'm working on a new layer. I'm down to 40%. And I want to just ride this up. Let's 
sharp. Kind of dissipate just a little bit. Now, one of the cool things that we can do once we get uh, this sort of illuminated layer happening, uh, maybe there's some more fun stuff that I can do here. And I'm going to turn this over on the very top of this thing. There we go. Oh, for me. So now we've got some of that light that started to impact the um, the wireframe that's going on there, uh, metal grating. And so now, uh, when you've got your when you've got your lighting in there, we can kind of turn it up or off. So that's what it is when it's off. And I'm just messing with the opacity right now. I'm looking at my navigator and just sort of turning it up. That's at 50 percent. And then this is all the way up. Let me check it again. I think 50% is sort of where I want to be with this. And then I'm going to do one more pass just to be able to integrate that light a little bit better with the um, with the metal rods that are going on within my shot. When I zoom in on those metal rods, they start to look really messy. That's not good, but I'm working on a new layer now. I'm going to go back. Uh, let's, I think I can get away with using the blurry tool since I'm making such uh, or the blurry brush since I'm making such tight little uh, line forms. And I've got it turned on to uh, 70 percent, so it's not all the way up to 100. But what I want to do is just start tracing around those wire forms, just adding little highlights and thinking about where the lighting is going to hit on these things, especially smoothing still on 20 percent and feel like it. The edge here. working for me. Inside lip and then again dissipating it as we move up. And I'm doing just sort of a quick pass around the top of these things. It's a good one to put it on. <clears throat> Here. So the next step. It's hard line to draw moving your hand well, when you're left handed. is adding just a little bit of highlight to it. Highlight going on here. And I'm off my canvas um, or what the final image is going to be. So now I'm going to drop my opacity down from 70% to 30%, so half of what it was before. And continue just to add a little bit of that wireframe. Rim lighting going on within some of these sections. is to help those pop out against the uh, right background that they're on and imagine that they're catching some of the light too. So that's feeling just about there for me. Because it's metal, even though it's painted black and it's a darker metal. And now when I zoom back, we can see that here, here it is without those little highlights on it and how much those little extra highlights really help to be able to sell the lighting dissipating down through the metal. Works pretty good to me. All right. So now I've got my big old illuminated lamps within my shot. I like the uh, the rough texture that that's creating without pulling the viewer's attention too much. We're still right now getting our attention pulled to these lamps because uh, they've got the most contrast in them. And the next part that I want to do on this is finally, <clears throat> let's turn our capacity up, is going to be this machine up here in the front. So this has got all kinds of interesting little uh, nooks and crannies and baubles and things like that on it. So I want to go in and start making some choices within this shot. Um, what do I want to be glowing is the uh, the first question that I'm going to ask myself within this thing. So let's get region selected and I'm going to go over here and let's go back into my reference. So under my reference, I've got a really bright area on this one right within this section. Let me check the lighting and that's a good middle gray. So there's still a lot of room that I can go really high up and bright with, but that's a pretty big 
differentiator from what I've got right there right now. That's it, 30%, this is that line, yeah, that's it, 100%. So where do I want this thing to be glowing? When you hit the mallet, right, the mallet is, is going to activate the lights. The harder you hit it, the, the higher up it's going to go. So, um, man, let's, uh, let's make it go almost all the way up to the top. I wanna leave this one as if it hasn't quite gone there yet, but uh, yeah, it's going to. So I'm on a new layer now. I'm still using the fuzzy brush. I wanna maybe get away from the fuzzy brush just for a second. I could do this with the hard round brush. That would work really well too. Um, let's go with the hard round brush just so I'm not messing up my shapes. Can't draw that many perfect circles. Okay. So I'm on a new layer. I've deselected it because these are going out a little bit. Tap, yeah. roll. All right, so those are all going to be turned on, except for this one. The other thing that I want to be turned on within this shot is the clown's head. I want that to be glowing. Be illuminating up here at the top. Sorry if you guys are scared of clowns. Just making some big decisions here. I don't want an outline around the outside of it. I don't want my shape to be. And we're going to have some other reflections and glows that are going on with this. So on this bulb right here, a really big reflection happening there. And then another reflection happening within this part and pouring around to the edge. So now we're right back to rendering that circle that we did within the first demo. Uh, the next thing that I want to be glowing on this are going to be these freaky little clown faces right here. I want the noses, since it's, you know, clowns typically have the red nose, um, to be a little bit discolored. All right, so that's going to be a little bit darker, but I'll work through that on a layer on top of this bright. But I'm just establishing what the light regions are within this painting right now. And that's going to help me just kind of keep in mind, since this is a night shot and everything is like super illuminated, seems like a good way to work through this. All right, so this guy is going to be glowing as well over here. Nose. Yeah. All right, so those two things are glowing. Anything else on this piece in the foreground that I want to glow? Um, you know, we could light up the entire thing underneath this. I think that's probably a good idea. So let's go one layer underneath this. And let me pick a slightly darker white gray. So I'm going to go down to here now just to be able to remember where the, uh, the light regions are going to be. So I say that all this stuff right in here. is glowing and illuminated and I want to paint this in a way that it looks like man there are some some different colors going on with this whole section you know that it gets uh, brighter or something as it as it moves up to the top that's the one it's going to stop for now so that one's not quite illuminated I still want it to be a little bit lighter but that needs to be a different color so all these guys will be turned on. It's like painting or coloring with uh, Crayola markers, right? You get the, uh, the outline done and then you work your way through, but you can also do that selection trick, which is probably what I should have done this far in the painting this evening. All right, so that's working well for me. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and drop the, my color down just a little bit more. Getting a lot closer to my middle gray now. This section up at the top. That's not going to be quite illuminated. So all that stuff is going to be glowing. The wraps around. The, uh, the light bulbs, I'm going to paint those in next. I need them on their own layer 
so that I can isolate them and get a really good um, layer select when I'm painting in all the glows and things right around those, those light bulbs to make that look like nice and reflective metal. All right, so for this guy, and all this working pretty good. I like it. Um, let's go in and I'm going to use my burn tool real quick. And let's just make it as if the light is coming right from the middle on these. The darkness right on the side, even though we're still going to have that brightness going on within these light bulbs. And yeah, let's give it a little bit more down at the bottom. So we said that each one of these is going to be just a little bit darker than the previous one. I like that color that I'm getting right now. Oops. So select the layer. There we go. It's working for me. Maybe we can just alternate the colors for them. That might work. There we go. That's giving us a little bit of the interest that I'm looking for here. Capacity. That works well, and let's go back and since we changed that, give our burn. Give it just a little bit of separation here with the burn tool. Which one of these pieces? We want them to be nice and round with the way that they're showing up. That's all looking pretty nice. I like it. Let me turn off my layer. And when I look at my painting, uh, yeah, I'm starting to get a nice region of brightness going on throughout here working pretty well for me. Um, and now I just need to be able to create the sockets or the base of these things. So the darkest color that I want, let's pull in some of that tone from my tint previously. And I'm going to block in just underneath the light bulbs. These things. All right, so these guys, they've got a particular shape to them. I'm at 26%, we want 100, and I am on the hard brush. That's exactly where I want to be. All right. So this is one of those like detailed shapes, right? Sort of funky, I could hurt my hand. Sit here and fill in every one of these guys. Just change my color. So these are going to be like a painted metal, even just to be able to get some more contrast. <clears throat> For this this evening, I'm going to be working on a logo for an outdoor adventure company. That's as well. Excuse me. All right, I think I've got this correct. So I can go in, holding down shift to be able to make multiple selections with my magic wand. Select, modify, expand. And I'm having to do one at a time. I don't want that. So instead, I'm going to create just a new layer. Hit Control E. And now the whole thing is filled up. All right. Let's check it out. Turn off my fill. There we go. So the clowns aren't really doing doing too much at this moment. That's OK. Uh, we'll get into their faces and turn these lights on here in a little bit. But for now, I think it's a, I'm in a good spot and I've established uh, a, a good enough uh, sort of light source and where the light's going to be coming from. But to start doing that first shadow pass, finally. I've been waiting for this. All right, so to begin the shadow pass, what I'm going to do 
is I can go in and I can actually, this is the closest thing to the foreground. So I can create absolute black here and I've got just a little bit of space based on that black. But right now I'm gonna start with this one just to give me a little bit more room um, as I move into my shadows. And so underneath here, let's go in and let's start painting it. So I want to, start this with that MB line art brush, the, the roughness. And I don't want to start with 100% here. Mm, I can actually. There's some sections that I know absolutely aren't going to be getting any of the light. So let's go underneath this rail. I'm on a new layer. And I imagine this being sort of a, a thin brass pipe. catch any light and I'm painting just the underside first for where the shadow is going to uh, arrive at down here I want this to be good and dark as well this piece at the bottom nice and dark behind this nice and dark as well this is sort of an inner lip that's going to be catching a little bit more of the light but we want it dark on this side. Right, and I've got a spring that I'm doing in, inside of here. So for that spring, make it almost completely dark and then sort of going down into a hole. That's going to be catching light. Let's give a little bit of a light right around the edge of this thing. It's all working well for me. A little bit of a bottom light just to be able to connect it down here at the very base around here. We're not going to see too much light that's appearing and I've got kind of a hole that's going into the ground within this section, but still I need to give myself some room to work. All right, so now we're creating that hole. Let's get deeper and darker. Got this whole spoke in this wheel. I'm going to go back up to 100% on this, and I know that I want these guys underneath it to be nice and dark. That can, eh, let's go ahead and make it dark. Okay. Underneath here, same deal. Looks weird, right? So I've got my sketch, and I'm thinking while I'm painting in these shadows, where where the light's hitting or where it's it's not going to be at. Uh, I've got another big pipe back here on the back side. So this is sort of the, the deepest shadow areas that I'm creating right now. And just giving myself some architecture to be able to work in and around and from with this piece. Um, yeah, that could all be dark too. Bottom of this, dark. Uh, and the bolt right there. Go ahead and just make some big decisions on some dark areas. So that's kind of another pipe that's coming out behind this entire piece. So I really don't want there to be any light. <clears throat> and there's definitely some more work that needs to happen uh, around this spoke this sort of fan looking shape described. So now I'm working at 34%. Let's pick up, pick up the pace a little bit within all this. Um, maybe some light is getting through within this section. I need to connect it. That's going to be dark. This is getting into the absolute brown this portion. So I'm working from the left hand edge of my piece. I can start working forward on this thing, giving my pipe 
some shading. I want to go all the way to the edge so that I'm leaving a little bit of rim light just for it to be able to show up. Same thing for this. Still working with these bright red highlights on, but I'm trying to work intelligently while I'm doing this so that when I turn them off, I start to get a good sense of where this lighting is coming from. So with that dissipate back there, I'm sure, you know, I had more time. Always if you had more time on these paintings, right? That's the trick is uh, you can get too sucked into the details. Good render all kinds of crazy stuff going on right behind this fan cog. That's what I'm going to call it moving forward, but just don't have the uh, the time to be able to put a bunch of stuff in there. So let's see if we can't darken it up further and give the illusion that there's some more shapes going on. So let's get a nice dark shadow going on underneath here. Hiding things in the shadows. This is a great way to be able to look. So again, this is just the uh, the sort of initial shadow pass as I'm starting to work throughout this entire left hand side. Know that all this is not really going to get a lot of lighting, so I'm going to darken it up. Let's go back, add a little bit of shading, remove those screws, and let's give it some good texture within this section. That chip metal, things like that. Just scratching it up. And I'm going to leave quite a few of those brush strokes in there. That's working pretty good for me right now. Let's go underneath. Yep. A little bit of shading on the pipe. Turn this down even further. We got some ambient occlusion, right? Where the light is sort of pooling or can't quite get to right around these things. Box. What's containing the uh, the clown face? Even though this is going to be really bright around here, I still need to establish some shapes and forms to it. Give it a little bit of shading. If I don't, it'll look off. It'll look messed up. Chip paint always a good idea. And uh, let's see here. Just a little bit more texture in this section. Okay, let's uh, turn off that highlight and have a look. Ooh, boy, that is rough, rough, rough right now. But if I check my navigator and zoom back, it is doing what it needs to within that section. And as I continue to brighten it up, it should look pretty good. So, uh, yeah, the next thing, uh, I think that I can continue to work through these shadows quite a bit more and get them 
a little bit more refined, start working through the highlights. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep on building out this, uh, time to save this portion of my scene, but you can see how I'm starting to get some of the shapes, the idea of them there. And just like we did with this, I'm going to continue working through it and building it up and building into the details. And, you know, some of this stuff is still really, really rough, right? Um, it could be cleaned up further. And that's sort of the fun part of these value paintings, right? When you start to do them and get them, uh, you know, get them working. When the lighting is working in there, it tricks the human mind and and he <laughs> will forgive a uh, a lot of details that aren't maybe as strong as they need to be, but they will be. Um, I'm going to take another break right now and let's do a third section on painting this uh, this carnival game here in the foreground. Um, I want to show you guys tonight just sort of how good this can look as we start to get in the lighting and really build it from scratch. Uh, Again, going into those shadows, you can see how rough it is, but once I get my highlights in there, it should start to refine itself and start to look more on par, if not better, than what I've done with this uh, this circus tent over here. There's still work to do on the inside of the circus tent uh, within the dark area and on the ground, but um, that region is feeling pretty good to me right now. So uh, yeah, take another break, and then we will get another video going here in just a moment. So thank you for tuning in.